Hey beautiful, this is Anton and in today's video I'm going to show you how to create your own system similar to Google Drive, Dropbox and such uh, where you can actually have a really cool interface, you can share files, you can even create an entire network for example for like a home business with your own email system, your own notification system and so on. But we're going to do this uh, to the extreme. We're actually gonna use one of these things, uh, an SBC. Uh, this is actually a Tinkerboard. You can use a Raspberry Pi. I'm going to be uh, possibly using something a little bit more powerful. Specifically this right here, Odroid XU4. Uh, this is actually a pretty awesome tool. It has a relatively powerful processor. It has two USB 3 ports, so you can connect two USB 3 drives to it. And uh, it will allow me to create uh, essentially a home cloud system with four terabytes. But I'm going to be using this for business purposes and I'm actually going to be uh, creating something that is equivalent to a NAS, but a home cloud NAS. So like a home cloud slash business NAS that will be absolutely awesome and super easy to use. And most importantly, very, very cheap. Uh, the entire system will cost us less than 200 bucks. Now, I'm also assuming that you've already uh, watched my previous video where I showed you how Open Media Vault works because we're going to be using this today. And uh, we're going to be installing something on top of it, uh, specifically this right here. It's called Nextcloud. This is uh, essentially an open source tool that allows you to turn your home cloud into an amazing home cloud, like a Dropbox, essentially. And let's just jump right into it. So here is my Open Media Vault. Um, you can see that I'm currently running ARM processor device called Odroid XU4. Uh, it's been up for just over an hour. And uh, I have attached my USB 3 drive to it. So we can go into disks right here and see that my uh, my passport is attached. It's about four terabytes. Um, under file systems, I believe I've already actually mounted it to the system. So what uh, you have to do, first of all, I highly recommend that you format this drive, um, preferably in Linux, uh, to the ext4 file system because it's much, much faster than NTFS um, and also because it will just cause less problems. Uh, here I have it mounted as D uh, dev sda1. Oh, actually, no, I don't have it mounted. So make sure to mount it first. And so that's step number one, mount your device. And here we just have to apply the settings and we should be able to see our device and I have it available right here under Samba. There's actually two folders. One is called data and one is called cloud. This is on my ext4 drive. And um, I might as well actually create the two folders we'll need later on. Uh, we're gonna go into data here and add two more folders. One is going to be called next cloud database and one is going to be called just next cloud. Uh, you can name them whatever you want, but that's easier to remember. And uh, now, we have to also make sure that these two folders are shared with everyone. So right here in the shared folders, make sure to add them. So for example, you could do, uh, doesn't really matter what name you give it. I decided to go with data and uh, select your device, add a data as a path. And here it's actually better if you choose everyone, given everyone read and write permissions and then save it. And so you'll have these two folders. One, one is called data, one is called cloud. Uh, the next step here is to make sure that your Docker uh, plugin is installed. So we're going to be doing this in Docker because it's probably the easiest way of doing uh, any kind of server installation. So here, type Docker, make sure that the Docker GUI is installed and everything works fine and it should appear right under services. And once you go here, once you are in the Docker, um, you will need to download these two repositories. One is called Maria D Database and one is called Nextcloud. To find them, and remember, we're doing this on a Raspberry-like device, so SBC, you first need to type these uh, letters, which is LSIO. Uh, so this is basically for ARM devices. And there's a bunch of stuff you'll find. Um, but if you scroll down, actually, if you want to be more specific, what you can type is, arm hf and then uh slash uh start type typing maria and it will give you well it mine is already installed but it will give you these two repositories maria database which is basically a, a kind of like mysql database and there's a next cloud which is the actual service itself so we actually have to set these two up and if you want to learn more about what we're doing you can actually type on info here but i'm going to just run the image and it's going to ask me a bunch of questions. So first of all, container name, I'm going to name this the database container. And uh, we're going to make sure that it always restarts automatically when the service is restarted. So make sure this says always. 
Um, we also need to change a few more settings here. Uh, so this one is not really important. For the host port, uh, you actually may want to enforce this. So make it 3306, then click on plus to basically save it. And we need to add a few environmental vi variables. Uh, the optional ones are things like time zone. Uh, so mine is actually Asia, Seoul. Um, these are these you can look up online. Uh, these are going to be different for all, everyone. And a, the mandatory one is MySQL underscore root underscore password. And here I'm going to enter the, the password for my database. So this is only for the uh, Maria database. I'm going to just go with something like password one, two, three, just so you can actually see um, where this password will appear afterwards. Um, you can obviously change this later on. Now we also need to input your PGID and PUID. So your PGID uh, can be discovered by Go into your console and you can actually see I have console open right now. Let me just make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. And uh, what we're going to do here is type ID and the, your username. So this is, this should be done actually on your, uh, well, so this is for my current computer. You can see my GID is here and my UID is here, uh, but this should be done on, on your device. So we're actually are going to SSH into it. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter my username, which is pretty much the same on that device as well, and the IP address for my device, which is the Odroid that's running on my floor because it's a lot hotter if I put it anywhere else. And my IP, I believe is 215. And there we go. Yeah, that's the correct IP address. So now um, once I log in, you can see it's raining. It's still pretty hot. Uh, Odroid is not a very good device for uh, cooling, uh, for being cool, but it is very powerful. And uh, so now what we need to do here is type ID and the name, and you can see that my GID or PGID is 100 and PUID is 1000. So those are the values we need here. So 100 and here we're going to put 1000 and save this. And basically that's kind of it for the environmental variables. We need the container path though. This, once you type config in this part, go to the folder and on your device, this is only for Raspberry like devices usually, uh, or basically Odroid as well. Under shared folders, uh, remember we started a few folders here under data. So I'm going to attach it to this right here to next cloud database. Um, so this is where all of my config stuff is going to be stored and don't forget to click on plus. And basically that's it for Maria database. As soon as you save it, this, uh, Docker will actually, uh, this container will actually be initiated by Docker and you'll see that it's running right away. Uh, but we now need to actually set up our username and give ourselves permissions. Uh, so we need to go back to the, um, console here. So let's, let's clear this. And what we need to do is we need to. First, uh, modify one of the files that's already in here. Uh, if you look into your uh, folder, you'll see that there is a, this, this folder called shared folders. So we need to jump into it. Um, and I believe, yeah, right here in, in the folder called data in next cloud database, I have a file called custom CNF. Now, uh, you need to edit something inside. I'm going to use nano for this. And, um, this is something that's going to be pretty much on the bottom of the file. So you have to really like scroll down to the end and right here somewhere, uh, there it is. Bind address, just, um, remove the hashtag and save the file. So this will, as you can see, it will allow the server to accept connections on all interfaces. Uh, this is essentially so you can log in to the server from anywhere. The other thing we need to do is we need to uh, now go inside the Docker and or inside the container using Docker and basically modify a few things there. So I'm going to just uh, become a root and we're first are going to restart the serve uh, service, which is I believe called database. Yeah, it's right there. Um, so I'm going to restart this and it's going to just take a few seconds. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to um, SSH into it, basically enter the actual container as a, uh, as a bash. 
Yeah, and we're going to use a few, uh, specifically three commands from um, Maria database uh, to set up the, the actual database. So here, what you need to type is um, Docker execute uh, with two flags, I and T, then database is the name of the Docker, and we're going to be using bash for this. And uh, here uh, we are now in inside the actual container, we need to uh, type this uh, my SQL dash uh, u root dash p to now enter the password, which if you remember correctly, was password one, two, three. And now we are inside the Maria database uh, by Oracle, and we can start typing those commands. The first command is this um, create user identified by the password. And here I'm going to uh, choose the same password as I did before, password one, two, three. And um, at the end, we need to put semicolon just so that it actually starts the command. This is how it's done in uh, MySQL or basically in Maria database. And if you run this, it will tell you, okay, the next uh, thing we need to do is create the actual database. And this is the command for it, create database. If not exists, next cloud. And the last command, is the longest and it's grant all privileges. And remember, this has to be in caps, grant all privileges on nextcloud.star to the user identified by the password. And once again, semicolon at the end. So these are the three commands we have to do. And, oh, I missed, uh, I missed a little part here. And uh, that's, that's it. Here we go. And now you can quit it, exit this, and you can also exit the SSH if you want to. Um, this, this was the device we were using and now we can actually log in back into open media vault and my password, um, is still the same open media vault. Um, and basically that's it for the Maria database. So now you know how to set up the Maria database and now we need to do the same for next cloud. So here we're going to click on run image and, uh, we're going to give it a name. So I'm just going to name it next cloud. Um, restart policy is going to be also always, and we're going to change two of the ports. One of them is going to be 443, and then we're actually going to change it to something different. Let's, uh, I don't know, let's say 444, but you can obviously choose any port you want. Uh, so we're going to save this, but we also are going to change the TCP port, uh, which was originally 80. Let's make it 8080. And that way, you not, none of the other programs will actually interfere with this. You don't need to enter any environmental variables, but you do need to enter two container paths. One of them, as you can see, is config. And this is going to be coming from the shared folders, uh, data, and right here, this the one we haven't used yet, which is Nextcloud. And the next one is going to be our data. And so here, uh, we're going to go and add it to the other folder, which is our cloud folder. So this is where all of the data will be stored. And that's pretty much it. So save it. And then within a few seconds, everything will actually be running. So now how do we actually access the um, open cloud? Well, that's the easy part. So remember you have your IP address, right? Um, and we set up everything to work on port 444, or at least I did. So uh, we're going to type 444 here, but we're also going to change this to HTTPS because that's a basically a secure server. And it will give you this connection is not a secure thing. That's because we don't actually have a certificate just yet. Um, there's a way to set up certificates later on if you want them, if you want to have them, but this is actually a kind of cool feature to have because it will scare some people that try to log in without knowing anything. Add exception, and you can permanently store it. And you'll actually be then greeted with your um, next cloud admin window. So now I, I'm going to create an admin account. And I'm also going to change this part. So our data folder is still the same, but our database uh, needs to have some of the um, information entered. So remember the password that we entered originally, password123. And this should kind of give you an idea of what to enter. So we have our password, our login name, uh, the name of the database, which was Nextcloud, and your local IP address with the port 3306. If you click on finish setup, it should now uh, give you access to your initial folder of your 
your own uh, cloud server slash Dropbox slash Google Drive, whatever you want to call it. It actually starts by giving you an option of downloading an app if you want. Uh, but basically, this is kind of what it looks like. It is an absolutely awesome open source service um, and it has a tremendous amount of support and tremendous amount of things you can install on it to make things easier. Now, some of the more useful ones are things like, for example, uh, media uh, or multimedia apps that you can get right here that will allow you to, for example, play videos and music uh, right from the actual app. So, you, for example, you can access things on your phone and you can play a video right away without downloading anything. So sort of like YouTube, I guess. Um, you can also um, create a mailing app. There's a, a lot of really cool um, built-in features, uh, including things like um, chat uh, boxes. You can actually set up several users right here that will then be able to chat or even video chat. You can basically turn this into a Skype app, um, an absolutely free one on top of that. Um, or you can uh, install calendars, you can install contacts. Um, you can even, if you want to, to uh, create a, a service similar to Google Drive, where you basically, and I believe it's actually here, uh, have a document that can be edited by several people, people at once. Uh, it's an absolutely awesome service. Uh, one of the things that I often use is the PDF reader, which I think is right here. Uh, this is essentially something to, well, let me just demonstrate this. I'm going to enable it and we're going to go back into the files and I can now uh, right away on the fly read this uh, document. So basically it will allow me to open up PDF files without really needing to download them or anything like that. Uh, but the, uh, on here's the media thing. Uh, but the coolest part about the next cloud is of course the fact that it's absolutely free. So you, if you're a small business and you don't want to pay thousands of dollars to Google, or I guess it's kind of hundreds of dollars to Google for setting up a cloud service. Um, the entire setup cost me, I believe, about 180 bucks. Uh, you buy a hard drive and you buy one of these things, and that is it. And basically, I have it running on my uh, floor. I'm going to obviously move it somewhere else. Uh, the only problem with this part is that it doesn't need, um, well, it does have a fan, but it needs a bit more cooling, I think. Or it needs a case that has some kind of an airflow because it does have a tendency to heat up a little bit. So like, for example, right now it's running at a temperature of 57 degrees Celsius. It gets to about 62, 63 um, on full load. And that's a little bit toasty. Like usually if I pick it up, I can actually feel the heat. Uh, but nevertheless, an amazing system. And because it has, it has two USB 3 ports, you can basically attach two um, hard drives to it and have as much space as a typical portable hard drive will allow you to have. So uh, four terabytes is something you can get really cheap. It's about uh, 97, 98 bucks right now, but you can get them even cheaper. Uh, and eight terabytes is usually about 130, $140. So you could potentially have 16 terabytes pretty easily without really doing much in terms of spending. Uh, so all in all, Open Media Vault plus Nextcloud uh, is definitely one of the best open source uh, things you can install on your own server. And it allows you to create any kind of a home business environment, uh, especially if you have several employees, without spending really anything. It's super safe. It's extremely, extremely well supported. And it's by far way, way better than Dropbox or Google Drive, simply because, first of all, you don't lose your data. The data is never shared. And second of all, um, you always have full control of everything. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to show you in this video. Hopefully now you know how to set up your own next cloud, um, open cloud system that will allow you to create your own Google Drive. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Stay awesome, stay beautiful. Bye-bye.